This special edition of Morning Brew with Jaffe and Razor is brought to you by the following. Berkshire Bank, the company that has presented Morning Brew with Jaffe and Razor for a while now. We can't thank them enough. In addition, Bay State Brewery. Go check them out at Worcester. On 112 Harding Street in Worcester in the Canal District, where they are attached to two hockey rinks and just a couple of blocks from the new Woo Sox ballpark. Since 2012, they have been handcrafting distinctive and drinkable beers, so many different types, including the Mike Light Light beer, something that Razor and I absolutely love to drink on a regular basis. Indoor and outdoor seating, video games, a window to watch live hockey, a full kitchen, including pizza, salads, smash burgers, and a whole lot more. Go check out Bay State Brewery at 112 Harding Street in Worcester. Also, Fazenda Coffee. Fazendacoffee.com is the place to exclusively find your morning brew mugs. That's right, folks. The mugs are back. Go check it out. Fazendacoffee.com. Spend $45 or more on product from Fazenda, and get yourself a free morning brew mug. Fazendacoffee.com. And lastly, Max Pro Hockey. Max Grachev is teaching hockey all around the area to youngsters from an individual basis to a full team training program. Go to maxprohockey.com, sign your child up for some great, unique, and fun hockey training. Maxprohockey.com. We thank all of our sponsors for helping make this show possible. Every once in a while, Razor, we get to do a special brew, right? That special blend of morning brew, and we get to bring a guest in. And we don't do it often. You know, our thing is more to talk about the games that the Bruins are playing in, except uh, this was one I I know both of us really excited about being able to do because we get to bring in somebody who I would say has a direct impact on the game and has made quite the, um, quite the statement in just a couple of years being a part of the Boston Bruins game day experience. We are talking about the one and only Todd Angeli, the anthem singer extraordinaire. There's a lot more to Todd than just the anthem. We know that. And we'll get into all that. But our fans know him. Our listeners know him as Todd Angeli, the anthem singer. And there's that has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? We welcome you in to Morning Brew with Jaffe and Razor. Todd, how are you doing this afternoon? I'm, I'm doing great. Thank you so much. It's uh, such an honor to be here and uh, be amongst uh, great people. And uh, thanks for having me on. We love, we, you know, listen, uh, we love the game day experience, the energy, the passion. You're a big part of it. I mean, it's the anthem sets the tone. But before I get into that, I want to know about Todd Angeli as a youngster, where it all began, where you're from, and when you got into singing. Uh, I grew up in uh, Warwick, Rhode Island, and uh, I have three brothers, and we're all big guys and uh, we sang in church choir and community theater and things like that and rock bands. And it seemed to be music was a big part of what we did every day. And um, it just kind of went from there. And I always wanted to be a music teacher. I always wanted to be a, a, an elementary school teacher, uh, return back to Warwick and coach my football team, my high school football team, and just be um, just, just a regular guy. And um, I, I, I went off to uh, Plymouth State, did my undergrad there, and got into um, performing a little more intensively, got turned on to opera. And um, then I kind of changed and wanted to become an opera singer. Ended up in Boston at the uh, New England Conservatory in the Air Opera Program. And incidentally, was working part-time at what was then the Fleet Center, when I was uh, when I was you know at, at New England, and it just went from there. So I don't know. I just uh, I never became an opera singer, but <laughs> I think if you if think if you told me then what's what's going what would be going on in my life first I wouldn't believe you, um, and second I'm pretty happy with where I am right now. So 
life has an interesting way of That's working great. itself out. When was the first time you were in the garden? When, when was your what was your opening debut? Uh, as far as singing? Yes. Um, so they actually would audition every year for what they called fill-ins. So uh, Renee would um, maybe not sing for about, you know, maybe a dozen games a season. He would just wouldn't be available or whatever. So they needed people to be able to step in. So that's what I did. Um, maybe about four or five years before um, the full-time gig came about. And um, I would just one game a season. It would be a, 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 a treat. I'd get all dressed up, obviously. My wife would come with me. I'd sing for the game. We'd watch the game, and it was just a special night. I was working there. I mean, I've always been working there. I've been uh, an employee for 20 years at the Boston Garden, but I would take the night off and be a fan one night a season. And Who did the Bruins play your first night? I can't remember. Sorry. No, it didn't matter. <laughs> didn't matter. Was didn't it a matter. one anthem? Was it one anthem or two anthems? No, we can no. Narrow it so, down that way. Yeah. So um, it was explained to us when we were at audition to be um, um, fill ins that you would never be singing both anthems. Renee would always be singing both anthems. So it would be for an American team. But um, I, I think the story that I like to tell most is I think where it really kind of became where maybe I caught their eye. <clears throat> I'd been doing the anthem, you know, as a fill-in for a couple of years, and it was the year that Vegas came on the scene. It was their first year. It was a Thursday night. Thursday nights are been pretty notoriously a, a big hockey night at the Garden. City night. It's a city night. People yeah. are out having a good time. That's it. And it was obviously it was the first game against uh, the, the Knights. And I'm in I'm in the deck, the sports deck, bartending, and all this, it, with the place is packed where it's just wall to wall people. And I hear some woman screaming my name and I look over and it's uh, Sam Mole, who's, she's the uh, young lady who tells you when to go out onto the ice. She's, you know, employee. And she's there with her headphones on with three or four Boston police officers. And she's screaming, you have to sing, you have to <laughs> sing. And I look at the game clock and it's like 640. And I said, I have to go get my boss. She's like, there's no time. And one of the Boston police officers like grabs at me and, and starts to escort me, you know, to the elevators. Um, and at the time, and I was a, a probation officer. I now work for the sheriff's department, but I was a probation officer. And I found out later that just happened to be my boss had come around the corner to see Boston police officers taking me out from behind the bar. And of course he doesn't know what's going on. And they had everything held and they bring me to the elevator and the elevator is being held. And they bring me down just in time for Jim Martin to say, singing tonight's anthem is Todd Angeli. And they put the microphone in my hand and I walk out and uh, I come off the ice and I say, can someone tell me what just happened? And they said, yeah, the person who was supposed to be here tonight didn't make it. And we didn't realize it till the Zambonis came off the ice and we knew you were upstairs. So we came and got you. And I said, all right, well, I got to get back to work. And I turned around <laughs> and went back to work. And that was it. So, I mean, maybe that had an, uh, an influence. But as far as getting everything, it was uh, you know, it was an audition process. So so, so basically, you e-bugged it. You were the emergency backup goaltender that had to go in that night. I, the e-anthem singer. So what would that be? The E-A, uh, <laughs> E-A-S for the night. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I never really thought about it like that. It just uh, it was maybe right place at the right time. They knew I was there. Did okay. So like a player, and Razor can speak to this obviously, being an NHLer, and I, you know, played a bit in college and everything. But there was a routine, right, Razor? Warm up in your mind. I'm talking hours before what you ate, what you do, how you stretch, etc. What about for a singer like you though? How hard is it to go <laughs> in cold like that? And what is your routine like before you go out there? Yeah, going in cold. It was just. You know, I think adrenaline took over, so there was no time to warm up. There was no time to anything. Um, my my normal routine now is is actually pretty cool. And the fans, I kind of they're a part of that, so they know that I'm not going to do too much talking. They come in, and you know, I'm serving them because obviously we're open before game time. And then, uh, um, you know, I'm drinking my tea or what have you. And then I'm getting down, you know, getting down to the ice uh, right after they come out for shoot around, and I just kind of sit quietly in a corner. I don't, I don't like to be in the way. 
you probably wouldn't know I'm there unless you knew I was there kind of, you know, I don't know if that makes any sense, but I just <laughs> kind of sit in the corner and, um, and just hide until it's time to sing. I go out and sing and then it's uh, back upstairs to get back to work because people have empty glasses and I need to fill them up. <laughs> Do you uh, do you take voice lessons still now? Do you or, or you know, do you work on that, or is it are you kind of past that now? Yeah, you know, um, yeah, yeah, I probably should. I've thought about it, getting back into it just to keep everything current. Um, I don't want to insult any real athletes out there, but singing is a very athletic process. And even though I don't look much like an athlete, um, it probably would behoove me to to get back into some voice lessons just to keep things on the up and up. But I've been pretty busy with you know outside gigs. I'm I'm singing pretty currently, uh, pretty co consistently, and um, so just as long as you're keeping it live and and uh, treating it the right way, and not a lot of loud places or doing things where that has me screaming and stuff like that. So um, just being smart about it and um, just always practicing and what we call vocalizing a lot of vocal exercises and things like that, because you got to keep it, you got to keep it ready to go. So there could be a home stand or, you know, um, you know, a few games in a row and um, especially against Canadian teams where you're doing two anthems. So you've got to, you got to be ready to go and, and be ready to, um, you know, be available whenever you need, they need you. How many times do you sing the anthem a year now? So if you got what forty home games, I'm probably doing a little over thirty because they they'll have the special nights, the special events, you know, uh, hockey fights cancer and first responder night. And the Bruins are great about bringing in special guests that are associated with that. So um, it's it's a lot, it's a lot, and it's um, I don't know how that compares to other arenas or other teams, but um, they do a good job of you know bringing people in, but um, they. I, I would say place a lot of faith in me to have me sing a lot of games. And you do every playoff game, correct? Yeah, there's no special guest there. We, that I don't remember. Uh, not yeah. granted, we haven't had playoff games for a couple of years. Yeah. Right I mean, at least that's way the way it's been for the past three years with me. Yeah. 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 Actually, we went to the bubble. Then I guess we did have playoff before. I can't keep track of everything no. anymore. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. Um, so let, let's go back though to the the actual singing of the song. In the mm -hmm. sense, I keep I, I I keep hearing or not keep, but I've read and I heard it's a hard song to sing. The national yeah. anthem, the U.S., especially I guess when you compare it to like the Canadian anthem, you know mm -hmm. that seems I'm told is the melody. I guess is that it, or the the the, the notes are easier. Is so is, is that all true? Yeah, it, it actually is. the The national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner, is, is very wide range. It starts very low, and it makes you go very high so you've got a wide range you've got to be able to cover a, a broad range of notes and and everything where a lot of the other anthems are are kind of more um you know uh, you know tight right around the same notes it's uh it's a very challenging song um and when you bring everything into it the adrenaline the seriousness of it what you're trying to do like you like you said in the lead-in you know you're starting the game off it it becomes um it's it's uh it's it's pretty hefty song to sing. What's uh what's the off season look like for you? I'm sure you have tons of events outside of the Bruins now. What do what do those look like? Is it always the anthem? Is it singing anything that anyone asks you? What do those personal gigs look like? Yeah, it's it's um you know I was I've I've had to make I've had to become very organized. Um, I tried to wing it so to speak when it first happened and. Uh, that first year, just that first year, before even before they made me the official, uh, before they you know made the formal announcement, um, I actually there was one time I double booked myself, and um, I was other than being completely embarrassed, um, I had to do an event at Warrior, and then I had to do a game at a school in Boston, and the school in Boston was the second one, so I, I tried to get out of it, and I explained to them, I said I I made a big mistake. And I, I know this isn't answering your question, but it kind of um, and 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 they were not willing to let it go. They said, well, we have to have you. So we're going to figure something out. And um, so he called me. The gentleman called me a day before and he said, OK, when you're done at Warrior, you're going to come out the front 
and there's going to be a, a state troop awaiting for you. And the state troop is going to bring you to our event. And I come down and there's the state, the state police officer. And I'm, I'm, I actually go to get in the back of the car. It was kind of funny. She was laughing at me um, <laughs> and drove me with lights and sirens on to the, to that event and got me there just, just in time. It was incredible. And as awesome as an experience as that was, I said to myself, okay, it's time to get organized. It's yeah. time to, <laughs> it's time to pull this together because if this is what it's going to be, you can't, um, you know, you can't be unprofessional and, and I'm not into it for the business aspect of it. I mean, yeah, it's, you know, um, there's, there's all that that goes along with it, but what a wonderful opportunity to take an experience and take a role as being the Bruins Anthem singer and be able to, um, utilize it in different ways. Um, <clears throat> the community events, you know, things for the kids, uh, charities, um, you know, working with Christmas Haven, Camp Fatima up in New Hampshire, just to name a few. But we have fun too. There's corporate events. Um, some, you know, a lot of the alumni will have, you know, fundraising events and stuff, and they'll reach out. And it's always, it's always pretty cool to get a phone call from, you know, Billy Jaffe or Ray Bork or somebody like that. Uh, Razor hasn't called me yet, but that's okay. I'm, I'm always available. Um, <laughs> I try and stay out of. I don't like being <laughs> yeah. in charge of anything. But you know, so yeah, it, I don't. I don't like organizing myself. Yeah. So I let every, you know. Leave you're you're more the appearance guy, I guess. Billy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's it's um, it, it was it's been real. It's been real fun, and I don't want to let anybody think that I don't enjoy being down on the ice uh, to start a game off. But there's something really special about being involved in the community events and um, seeing a bunch of kids just lose their mind when you show up for a youth hockey game. Um, it, it's that's like been so much fun. Um, and, and some of the unfortunate um, uh, events as well, I'm going down to Rhode Island on Sunday to sing for a, uh, a game. There was a, a, a high school senior who passed as a result of a, of an accident and being from Rhode Island, they reached out. So um so my summer is pretty much um, I'm starting to have to say no to things. And that bothers me because you have to take time for family. And I've never you've gone from being like just a regular person, like whatever. And then all of a sudden people want you to do things. And, and the inclination is to want to do everything. Um, but you know, I have a family, I have two children. Um, so I try to say yes to as many things as I can because uh, it's a it's a great um opportunity and and gift to be able to do things like that so the sum is pretty booked um but we're gonna have some fun and um bring some smile to people's faces you uh you bring smiles to a lot of people's faces at td garden when you hit that high note you know uh the land of the free and the art you know it, 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 um what's is there a cool player uh, experience or interaction that you may have had after you've done uh, the, the anthem, anything like that? I mean, I know you get off the ice kind of quickly, but is there anything that stands out to you, especially, uh, you know, from a, perhaps from a Bruin player recognizing you? Well, yeah, yeah, you know, don't get me wrong. And I'm not sending a message to anybody. I would love the opportunity to, to, to meet the team. I've never really met them, so to speak. I, mm -hmm. I try to, I try to stay in my lane. Um, you know, I have a role. They have a role. Um, plus, I got to get back to work because the other two bartenders, I'm, you know, I'm leaving them <laughs> hanging. Um, you know, but I, as much as I would love to be um, more involved with the team, you know, th that'll that'll come. I think. Who knows? But mm -hmm. I have. Um, I will say, uh, uh, the the chef at Tresca had re reached out um, prior to this season and asked if I'd come down and do some singing a couple of nights before the season started. And he brought me upstairs. He said, I want, I want somebody I want you to meet. And I walked up and uh, Jeremy Swayman was eating dinner with his parents. And I just thought that was the coolest thing. You know, the kid's about to start, you know, be the starting goalie for the, for, you know, the best NHL hockey team in the world. And he's sitting there with mom and dad eating dinner. And, <laughs> and I was like, I like this kid already. And um, it was funny because as, I, I said, listen, I, I'm really, no, he brought me over and I, I you know, shook hands with, you know, and I said, I'm sorry, but you know, can I, can I get a picture with you? And he said, well, actually, I was wondering if, 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 if I can get a picture with you. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, no, I, I, you know, everybody seems to, um, they, they, I, I don't really have an opportunity to bump into a lot of them. Um, I'd love to um, more, but it, it, it'll happen. I think right now this is what I should be doing, getting them fired up before a game. 
And nobody's ever come by and tapped you afterwards as you're heading off the ice. Uh, no, no, because um, um, they're doing their thing, and I'm running off the I'm running off the carpet. Yeah. So no, and um, I as much as I'd welcome that, they have you know they have to get into the game, yeah. and I don't want to I don't want to disrupt that. You know, do your kids come often to the um, games? They love it when dad's out there. I bet. Yeah, you know, um, they did a lot more in the past because of COVID. Um, They've they've limited me bringing guests before I could bring a couple of guests. So they would give me two passes. And it was actually kind of cool because having two kids, I could hear them in the morning sometimes before I would leave for work and say, oh, hey, you know, my son, Luke, my daughter, Cassie and Luke. Would be like, hey, Cassie, uh, why don't you go to tonight's game and then uh, I'll catch the game on, you know, and then they're, they're trying to <laughs> schedule their 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 night. But they get um, they, there's been such great experiences with them and, and who they meet, especially during the playoffs when they would have the. Uh, uh, the the cap uh, the flag waivers and some of the people that they've been able to meet and um, but they're they're also I think they share in the same attitude that I do I've I've had them up in the deck and I've wanted to bring them over to meet you guys and no 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 you know we'll we'll stay over here they're very uh, they're, they're very good about stuff like that it's it's funny that, that they love they love hockey they love the Bruins um, um, matter of fact the NHL reached out my wife had filmed my son with another one of his friends doing the the Swayman um woman uh hug uh, -huh. uh yeah. and uh the, the, actually the nhl reached out about that so um the kids get into it we play hockey in the uh, driveway and uh it, it's a lot of fun it's it's really brought something extra special to uh family life here are, are you like um kind of like a player in the regard that in the <clears throat> sense that come playoff time you turn it up just a little more you're a little bit more intense when you're walking on the ice you're he you're holding the note for an extra second. Like, like, do you feel that? Oh, absolutely. And but there's also, you know, being the son of a veteran, um, and I don't want to pass judgment on the way other way uh, other people sing the anthem. But um, there's sort of a there is an etiquette in singing the anthem, and um, you shouldn't. I have a certain style the way I do it, so I try not to get too showy with it. But I think the passion and the and the and the intensity. I'm able to bring that through when I'm singing it. Um, oh yeah, there's always a little something extra, but there's always a little something extra in the building too during playoffs. So I kind of, I think everybody rises, you know, to that occasion. So it's 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 palpable. Would, would it that. sound would it sound different <clears throat> to that point? Would it sound different if we went back and got the tape from the first time you went out and sang to to where you are now do you do, do you make improvements do you make subtle touches do you add to take away or is it a stock anthem you've got now depending on the night and and where your passion levels at um so i wouldn't know because i don't like to listen to myself so i've never really listened to myself other than if i like walk into the room or it happens to be on a TV show, but I will never listen to myself. Um, I think probably now compared to when I first started doing it, it's a whole different because I'm starting to feel more comfortable. You know, there's a, you know, I get real, I do get really, really nervous. Um, but that nervousness is brought on by how serious I take it and how serious the fans take it. Um, you know, that was a big undertaking to come into this and with a tradition of Renee for 42 years. You know, uh, I'm a very traditional person. So knowing that we had, you know, I had to um, step into a role that was, I mean, some people grew up their entire life with, with Renee. So, but um, I, there are, there are certain nights that are tough, especially when we're honoring somebody or somebody has passed. Um, you know, I, it, it's, it's tough to, you know, um, not get more emotional on those nights. Um, but you know, you just, I think you just, it, it, you just let it fly. You just let it go. So do you, do you still practice the song at home or have you done it so much now that you don't need to? Oh no. Always, always need to practice. Always need to keep it fresh. Um, you know, it's, um, and again, not equate, I'm not in no way equating myself to an athlete, but, um, you've, you've got to always, I mean, you know, just because someone's good at their sport doesn't mean they don't go to practice anymore. You know what I mean? You have to keep, have to keep doing it. Um, and, um, so I'm, I'm constantly singing and, and just keeping it, you know, ready to go. What else do you like to sing besides the national anthem? Like, what do you find? What, what could, if, if we were doing the old, we found you, you know, 
one day you didn't know that we were listening and we heard you. What might what, what me hear Todd Angeli singing? So, you know, and I, I guess this was the part of Ray's question I didn't answer. So, like, uh, sometimes it won't be just the anthem that I'll get hired out to do. So I do a lot of, you know, the standards, classics. It can be, you know, the, um, the you know, Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, that type of style. Uh, also the classical, you know, I can, I can uh, opera um, and a lot of, uh, you know, sacred music, you know, church style music. Uh, I'm a big, uh, big country fan. And I kind of have this uh, um, hoping I can get enough of a reputation where someone will allow me to go up on stage and, and uh, you know, maybe uh, Goth, when Goth Brooks comes this summer, you know, you know, he, he'll let me jump up on stage and do a couple of songs with him. Um, I, I, I'm a, I love all types of music and, and even play a little bit. Uh, I'm a trumpet player as well. Uh, so just keeping music all the way around. So, But mostly right now, the, the fun that I like to have is um, – uh, I'm a big Dean Martin fan, and uh, like like that 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 smooth that smooth style. What's the the wildest request you've gotten the last few years to go sing at or for or what kind of performance was it was offered to you, and did you take it? Oh, I'll I'll never shy away from anything. I I got I got asked to um, um, do a, an opening night of roller derby. <laughs> um, that was, that was pretty wild. Uh, we had to negotiate. So that's coming up. I haven't done that yet, but I'm actually kind of excited for that. Um, nothing too wild as far as singing. I have now officiated three weddings. Um, that's, that's the most, that's when you really understand how intense Bruins fans are. <laughs> that not only, uh, they, is everything decorated Bruins decor. I, um, I married, uh, just out of, out of, uh, respect. I won't say their names, but, I've gotten really close to them. They're season ticket holders. Both of the both the, the couple themselves are are past hockey players. Uh, she was a, um, a goalie, and he played. And, that, and they met playing hockey together. And the pergola was actually a goalie stick and a regular hockey stick. And um, they wanted me to officiate the wedding, and uh, it was it was it was pretty wild. It was, uh, and um, so 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 that's that's been uh, one of the. Uh, very interesting experiences. Um, nothing, nothing too. Oh well, you know, I did an MMA. I did an MMA fight a couple of uh, uh, weeks ago at Encore. Um, probably like any, more like any any other sporting event. Uh, I just found it kind of weird. Um, they had four fights before I stepped in the thing before the main event, and as I was going into the ring in my suit, I had to navigate over the blood spots on the floor. <laughs> so. <laughs> I mean, you know, never really had to do that before. Um, and I think it's more like the experiences of what goes with it. Um, you know, the, the bull gang and everybody at the, at the garden is so professional and everything is right there for you. I went up and sang uh, a Mariners game last week. Um, I will tell any singer out there that the wonderful rug that the Bruins use is not used everywhere. So when you walk <laughs> swiftly out onto the ice up at the cross arena – um, you should be a little careful. I um, right. I found out my balance is pretty good, but you didn't my, go down. Well done. I, you didn't I was go close. Down. It was it was very <laughs> you close. Didn't go um, down. Anybody anybody there with a phone and a YouTube reel going almost had gold. Um, <laughs> I came very very close. Um, I've had to do hockey games where they they look at you and they're like, uh, you got to go over the boards. Sorry, it's the only way you're going to get there. So, um, you know, just things are even uh, even uh, doing. I uh, did a boxing match. Uh, and I had to climb into the ring, and that was that was pretty hard. Um, did, so, did Razor didn't didn't the guy and uh, I don't remember his name in uh, Vancouver have a bad uh, incident once? Uh, yeah, he went down. It? Oh he boy, went down. Yeah, I saw he's, that. He's one of the guys that does you know, and I get it. You know, he started singing, and then he holds the mic up, and everybody else sings. Yeah, you know, half of the song for him. Well, okay. I mean, I get it, kitschy and everything, but uh, I like it when. When we have Todd singing the, the whole song there. <laughs> yeah, who's your uh, favorite National Hockey League anthem singer around the league, other than anyone affiliated to the Bruins? Um, so you guys quickly, I, don't, I try not to make answers wicked long, but this this deserves a little bit of explanation. We have a wonderful, the all the anthem singers, we, we have like a Twitter group. We all talk to each other. And it's really cool because you got someone like Jim Cornelison at, in Chicago who, in my opinion, just is the man, the person. But during that that Stanley Cup run, 
I was, I'm pointing to the garden right now. I was out in my flower bed and I was really looking forward to game three because it was away. It was the finals and we were going to go out to eat and I was going to get to sit and watch a game and enjoy it and kind of take it all in. And my phone dinged and it was um, Charles Glenn, who at the time was uh, uh, the, the singer of the same for the St. Louis Blues. Mm -hmm. And he just sent me this message on Facebook telling me how awesome he thought I was and how what an honor it was to share the series with me. And, um, you know, he was he said I, he even said, I'm not going to wish you luck. But it's been an honor to, to watch you sing. And, and, um, and we would go back. And I think that's where some of the holding the free came from. We would kind of, you know, call the other one out. And then we got into a habit of, uh, and of course, we went seven games. So we had a lot of back and forth. And then, um, you know, he would do a game and then he'd text me really quick. All right, back at you, Todd. And I'd be like, all right, you're going to get it tomorrow night, you know, kind of thing. Um, I think it's. I think everybody does a great job. I really like Jim. Um, Sonia down in Tampa um, is just, she's a wonderful person um, and, uh, and, a, and a great singer. I think all of them have such a great style. Martina up in Tor Toronto, uh, she's an accomplished recording artist, but she's not too big for the role to still be a part of our group and, and talk. And so we really lend each other a lot of support and, uh, and actually with, um, um, it's it's cool to see a lot of these singers taking on other roles in their community as well. So, um, so but but Jim is just um, I'm going to try to get to an away game, and I'd like to go out to Chicago, and I'd like to reach out and just say, "Hey, Jim, be nice to shake your hand." You know, I think he'd love that too. You know, you, he might be a great singer just like you, but he doesn't make a good drink, from what I'm told. <laughs> I'm not, actually, I don't know if that's true or not. What's your best drink? What are you known for up there at, at the bar? And, um, you know, how do uh, – I mean, look, we, we work right next to you. Right. We, you know, our booth is right next to you. So we see the interaction of people with you. It's it's not even a softball question comment, but it's just got to make you feel great knowing not that they recognize you, but that they appreciate what you're doing more than just slinging, you know, a, a whiskey sour at them. Yeah, no, it, it's 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 been it's been a lot of fun. And I think that that adds to their experience. And then um, we'll have a lot of people come in and they'll bring friends and I'll see the person walk in. And, and and the and the the regular the the the, mm -hmm. the the ticket holder will say, "See, I told you he works here." Yeah, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> and it's it's and and even where you can see out of the bar, people will walk by and they'll point and wave and or they'll they'll take pictures and stuff like that. And um, or pe people will bring their kids in. It's been a, again more to what I was saying earlier. It just it just adds to that whole experience, and especially with the past couple of years, having the ability to make people smile. Um, you know, I work in a real negative environment during the day, you know, in the correction system and to be able to step into a role where somebody walks in and they just light up and, and they get all fired up. And, um, that, that, that's been a wonderful uh, experience for me and I'm, and I'm so very lucky. Um, so I, I don't really think it matters what I'm making them as far as a drink goes. They just like coming <laughs> up and ordering a drink from, from, from nobody the Nobody tells singer. you. Nobody tells you that you make this the best, uh, you know, no. Long Island I see. No, <laughs> no, no. I, I, they act. That's, that's funny. I never thought of that. I never get any uh, compliments as to my ability to do my job. I think it's more Bud that. Light. Yeah, Bud that's light. it. Here you go. Here's a beer. Listen, <laughs> Razor, Razor. I don't know if you remember in Chicago, there was a bar called Stanley's Kitchen and Tap. I don't know if you remember if you ever made it there. It was a great hockey bar. Anyways, Lincoln Park. Long story short, when I fell into broadcasting, I was in my late 20s. I left my other gig full time and Stanley's was a place where all I did was drink for years and after hockey and stuff. And then I said, I, I need a job because I fell into a business in broadcast and like pays nothing when you begin. Right. Like it's, it's awful. It's wonderful, but awful. Anyways, long story short, I got a bartending job. And so I, they gave me shifts there because I'm a hockey guy, whatever. And I would work Friday nights, Friday night shift. Like I'm getting huge shifts on. For, and and somebody would yell, I right, give me this and that. And I'd be like, what? What? And they said, give me this and that. You know, like it's like some fancy drink. And I'd say, you said Bud Light, right? <laughs> and I would just crack up Bud Light because I couldn't make shit. I could <laughs> not make a drink. I was the world's worst bartender. Thankfully, my two bar bartenders behind the, the, uh, the bar there were awesome, and they and they saved my ass. But anyways, my my tangent. Sorry, Razor, going on that right there. <laughs> no, keep it going. No, I was no, I, I I was awful as a bartender. What you mentioned the the uh, 
the, your other gig, your day job. Yeah. And I find it fascinating. And I, I think your comment is, it's interesting. And I think obviously appropriate. You go from a negative type, uh, a, a different field job to fun. Yeah. And where you're, you're there to provide fun and you're doing it, not just in one way with a bartending, mm -hmm. but going on the ice too. How, how do you, how do you manage that? Or does, does it take a lot to manage? Well, it, it so when I first started as when I first started singing and it was, you know, became the anthem singer, so to speak, I was in probation. So that's a different setting, but still to be able to balance that, you know, I actually had a probationer once walk in with a brand. I saw him coming from a mile away and brand new Bruins hat with a Sharpie in his hand. And he's like, Hey, Mr. Andrew, can you sign my hat? And I'm like, listen, pal, this isn't the time nor the place, you know? Um, since then I, I got a promotion, I guess, so to speak. Um, and, into the state prison system that that got weird because you're walking around in facilities and not only do the CEOs recognize you, but the inmates recognize you. And, um, you quickly learn that, you know, what they're watching, um, uh, at night, uh, they were all big Bruins fans. So, um, and, and what was interesting Boy, was that's not a marketing campaign. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but what's, what's interesting about that's that is, it. and this is a great, this is a great story that makes me laugh all the time. I, um, I made a comment about going into one of the units at, at Sousa, which is the max. And I said, uh, does anybody want to escort me in there? Does anybody, do I need an escort or whatever? You know, and one of the CEO says, uh, you don't have to worry about safety. They're huge Bruins fans. They're not going to hurt you. And I was like, <laughs> All right. Good enough. So, um, but you know, that, that's kind of, that's kind of, um, I, I, you know, you have to learn to separate, you know, your personal life from your, your work life. Um, but it's still, I mean, it brings a sort of nostalgia to it, and the guys get all jacked up when they they see me come in, or you know, especially the morning after a big win or something like that, and they want to talk Bruins. But you know, if it keeps everybody behaving and happy and out of trouble, then you know it works. That's awesome. It is I, awesome. I, <laughs> I love great. that. I was I was a a, a poli sci and a sociology major. Or I had a minor, and I, I I actually went to a prison mm -hmm. to teach classes one night for about four hours, and I was always fascinated by that. So so maybe maybe one day I'll hit you up to go visit the, the, there from a just from a like I guess an eye opening type of experience again. You know, there's there's I'm and I'm actually being serious. There's always wonderful opportunities to bring people in. I actually work in specifically we call it reentry. So I'm working with these guys to actually help them reintegrate. Uh, you know, get them, prepare them for release. Um, so bringing in, you know, speakers and, and motivational people and stuff like that is always a positive. So there could be a, an opportunity there, you know, you never or know. Or Razor could do learn to play at one of them. Yeah. I think, right? We're in the Absolutely. foundation. Little, 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 little ball hockey game out in the, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no problem. In the yard. Hold your stick yeah. like this. <laughs> oh, that would be awesome. Yeah, hey, listen, love... bef before we let you go, um, you, you know, we talked about, uh, Another project that you've got going, yeah, um, a, a children's book mm -hmm. with Owen the Pug. Um, you have a copy of it, I know, with you there. So on the YouTube yeah. side of things, we can mm -hmm. have you hold it up. Sure. And um, I don't know, Razor, did you see that copy we had? I don't know if you Oops. were you there last week. There was a copy. No, I wasn't. In, I wasn't in for the game. No. Okay. So it's a it's a child's book that just came out, a children's book. Why don't you tell us the details about it and 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 what it's all about? Yeah, so thank you. Um, so Rachel Gogan is actually uh, the co-author on this. I work with her uh, in the prison. So she's uh, she's actually worked for uh, uh, about 29, almost 30 years in the prison. And she's incidentally a, a season ticket holder and a member of the sports deck. And through our interaction working together, we just got really tight. And um, um, we were sitting around one day and uh, we're talking about her pug, Owen, who's actually a certified therapy dog. And she does a lot of uh, going into the hospitals and work with the kids and bringing Owen in. And um, I th I th at first we were just goofing. And I said something about, oh, we should make a, uh, a, a we should make a movie uh, because we were doing a lot of the things during the pandemic. I was doing some Christmas parades and appearances at people's houses and things like that just to try to keep everything positive. And Owen was coming with me. And it was just kind of a, a cool, um, he he just would just sit at my feet and he loved listening to me. He loves listening to me sing. And um, it just kind of felt right. And when I made the joke about making a movie, she said, uh, well, what about a children's book? 
and I kind of, we both kind of like, you know, oh, okay. And um, all of a sudden, the adventures of Owen and the Anthem singer just shot out of somebody's mouth, or whether it was mine or whatever, <laughs> and it just sounded right. And we just thought it would uh, was a good opportunity to um, focus in on, um, you know, uh, what what we do working with the kids, and can, we and and we interact so with so many kids and and hockey and the kids are playing hockey and. Um, we just we 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 talked to Swoops, uh, you know uh, Bob Sweeney about uh, getting the foundation involved, and he jumped all over it. It was it wasn't even a, a sales pitch; he just got right in. Um, so we uh, decided the first book we published and uh, formally uh, released in March, uh, and it just it's um, the the anthem singer and Owen uh, uh, practicing and getting ready to go see their favorite hockey team, who happens to wear black and gold. Um, and Owen's going to drop the, the ceremonial first puck and I'm going to sing the anthem and it goes and kind of follows us along in our preparation and, you know, working towards, our, you know, setting these goals and working towards the goal. And at the end of the book, we realized that we, we worked hard and uh, we followed our dreams and, and we got to do something that we had always wanted to do and just trying to promote that message. Uh, it's under the, our website, which is find your own bark. Uh, which is just kind of like our message. We want the kids to be able to just uh, find their own bark or, you know, uh, find their own voice and not be afraid to to go after whatever it is that makes them happy. And um, who knows, maybe I would have never sang if I really didn't enjoy it and just took a shot. And um, we want uh, kids to realize that they, they can do that. And um, we're going to we're going to try to be consistent with this, maybe three or four books a, a year. But we want to also focus each book on a different subject um, and also um, uh, provide um, support to different agencies uh, or, you know, uh, foundations. Uh, we've, ta we've talked with the Navy SEALs, uh, the Thomas Smith Foundation, um, and even uh, talked with Charlie Moore about the uh, Alzheimer's Foundation. And um, so we're, we're really excited. And uh, the first books so far, so good, successful. Um, we're getting some really good sales and some really great feedback. And we're going to start with some appearances, especially as the weather's getting better and, uh, do some readings. We're getting booked, uh, to go into schools and, and read. And, um, maybe as we clear up from the pandemic, we can tag along with the, the foundation when they go into schools and stuff like that. And, um, just want this to be a, a positive, uh, positive, uh, uh, experience. Well, Book looks awesome. I saw it last yeah. night on set, and we saw it last week as well. Uh, great stuff. So findyourownbark.com. Mm -hmm. Findyourownbark.com. Go yeah. check it out. Todd and uh, Owen the Pug yeah. doing some great things, getting there. Uh, this is a lot of fun, and we appreciate you taking uh, some time to join us here. And we're getting ready for the playoffs, man. They're coming up right around the corner. Can't yep. wait for that first one. So maybe when you're done with that anthem, First game of the playoffs at home. Maybe we'll get Razor and I will get a little special turn from Todd. And he'll give us a little look That's up it. there with the finger. Like, yeah, I, a little I, fist bump. I promise. I absolutely will. A little salute uh, to my gentleman up top. I, oh, that would be outstanding. And then I will come in for some fancy drink that I have no idea how to make. And I'm sure you'll make it in a second. Todd Angeli, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you so much. All right, that's going to wrap up this morning. Brew with Jaffe and Razor, as always, uh, presented by Berkshire Bank and also the other companies that help make this possible. Fazenda Coffee, Bay State Brewing, and Max Pro Hockey. Everybody, have a wonderful day. The playoffs are almost here, so please enjoy your god darn coffee. <laughs>